Record. Are we doing? Are we doing that like a uh, that cold open thing? Like they yeah. record them. He did. So you, for usually for for recordings, what I do is I take a clip from from what you know the the podcast and put it at the beginning like a little teaser, mm-hmm. and then the opening starts and then oh, like for like for like the live shows. Um, I like almost. Keep- I want to do like a cold opening. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Unless there's something that you wanna, you wanna say, we could do it. We could do it either way. I don't know. Like this documentary is dope. Very, very, very. <laughs> <laughs> it's very, it was very heartbreaking if you think about it. It was very grueling. It's a little mixture of everything, right? Yeah. Like, sheesh. That's all I gotta say. Is sheesh. Okay. Like. Well said, Ferris. Sheesh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was just that. 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 That <laughs> oh, oh, okay. I thought because you said you you were going to do it, so I was not prepared. All right, hold on, hold on. Before, before you hit the intro, Black Pride, baby, we in the building. Yeah, <laughs> it's the order of Black Pride. I agree. <laughs> Yes, Ring Kings podcast is back, and we are here with our guy man. Ferris from the Let's Get Ready Network. Ferris, what's going on, brother? Yo, man, that intro still go hard, man. It, it, yo, man, it go hard all the time. Come on, man, that shit. Yo, man, it makes you, it makes me want to jump in the ring right now. You know, and there you are. That, that, there you are. That intro, you are. You are in the ring. That, I am in the ring. That intro makes you want to fight more than uh than some housewives on NBC. You know what I mean? Like, come on, like, you know, come on, get my, you know, man. Like, straight up. Yeah, shout out to Verse for that one. He did his thing. They would love it, love yeah. it every time. Yes, 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 indeed, indeed. I yes, to get so, Mr. Galloway to draw some lyrics on it. Yeah. Oh. I, I want. It's so hard. I once made Jose play it like three times, and he was like, "You know, Ferris, I like you, but stop." Yes, yes, yes. Like, we, I, I think that's before we actually like brought it out. We, we kind of yeah. played it for. Like, it's like, it's like I don't want to get sick of it already. And I was yeah. like, I can't get sick of this. This is. Oh uh, no, no, no! This and is we, fire we, shit. Yeah, right? we have a longer version too. Yeah. Um Actually, if you want to check out the longer version, you can go lunch break hot take. Um, it, it should be uh, our featured video on the channel when we first hit a thousand subs. We had actually verse. Uh, do an opening for us, like a 10 or 15 minute opening. Mm-hmm. And um, and he plays a longer version of that beat. So if you guys are interested, go ahead and check that out. Lunch break, hot tape. And um, you'll find a the video there. All right. But yes, we are here to talk about a documentary that we watched on AMC plus called <laughs> Cassine the dream. Um, yeah. If you don't uh, go ahead, you, you want to break it down? B will break oh, well, down. I was, the... I was just going to say, you know, in, in boxing, it's, it's a little, boxing is a little different than other, other sports. Uh, you know, you don't have a league and it's not kind of going on continuously. There aren't, uh, uh, you know, set dates like, you know, the NFL, you know, you got games Thursday, Sunday, Monday, right? NBA, you know, there's there's games every day, MLB, all that. Boxing is, is a bit different in that it's just kind of, you know, whenever two sides get things together and, and you know, decide they're going to, to agree on a fight, like just saw the, the tweet from Oscar De La Hoya saying they have not received a contract from Javante Davis for that fight, even though the deal is done. And if they don't get that. one by Monday, then they're moving on. Uh, so, you know, you never know even when things are, are agreed to, whether it's actually going to happen, when it's going to happen, things like that. So we kind of thought that, you know, the one thing that boxing doesn't have a, any shortage of is drama uh, and, and great personalities and great stories. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we kind of thought, yeah, we can dive into boxing cinema, you know, boxing movies and boxing documentaries and kind of fill in the 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 gaps in the sport, right? Uh, so like you said, we, we all watched Kasim the Dream, uh, which is a documentary about Kasim Uma. Uh, he's a Ugandan boxer. He was a, a middleweight. He competed at like 154 to 168. Uh, 
And, you know, at one point he was one of the top prospects in the world. Uh, he fought for the middleweight championship against Jermaine Taylor. But what makes Kasim Uma stand out is his, his personal story uh, from the time he was a child in Uganda. Uh, when he was about six years old, he was kidnapped at school uh, by the NRA, a, a rebel army in Uganda, and was trained as a child soldier uh, and was in that, that army for about 12 years. Um, and, you know, while he was in the army, they, they, they overthrew the, the Ugandan government and became the actual legitimate national army for Uganda. And he, <clears throat> excuse me, he, uh, joined the military boxing team. Uh, that's where he, he learned how to fight. Uh, he was supposed to go to the Olympics in 1996, but they didn't have the money to send the, the team to Atlanta. Uh, a couple of years later, they were invited forward to stay at the military boxing team was invited to the U S he got his visa, came over, and essentially uh, defected and deserted yeah. the, the the military. And you know, he he went around. He didn't have any money. He didn't have any place to stay. He didn't speak English. But he found a gym, and he just started putting in the work. And he, he built himself up and, and had a uh, a pretty nice career. I mean, he's still technically active, uh, but this is you know covering the early earlier part of his career. Yeah. Um, so yeah, oh, we, last year. Yeah, yeah, last year. yeah. He oh, man. He was supposed to fight uh, at the end of December. That that fight didn't come off. So we'll see what's what's uh, you know in the future for Kasim. Uh, but yeah, we just wanted to talk about the the documentary. Uh, brought our friend friend Ther- Ferris on here uh, to get his opinion. What did what did you think of it, Ferris? Um, sheesh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Um, uh, it was it was grueling. It was heartbreaking. And extremely eye-opening because you start thinking about it, right? You start thinking about like, okay, like you're like, oh, he, he was a child, so like, and he 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 tells you, I murdered people, yeah. I killed, yeah. I've murdered people, but then you're like, we know, but you were eight, right? Like you were eight, you know, yeah. and like, and you start thinking about it, like, what kind of a grown up. A grown up possesses themselves and says, "You know what I'm gonna do? My all my soldiers are all gonna be ten to eight year olds." Like, imagine that, bro. Like, wh- who who in their right mind said, "All my my entire army is gonna be a child soldier?" Because like, because I remember watching this movie called Beasts of No Nation with Idris Elba, mm-hmm. and basically like, kind of like a, it's a fictionalized African country, but it's really taken from the the, the African countries like like Uganda, like Rwanda. Uganda, yeah. Yeah, so, and the children, and you're just like, imagine, you know, you're minding your business and an eight-year-old with an AK shoves it in your face. Mm-hmm. Like, and that eight-year-old has, like, murdered four people already. And you're like, am I going to be number five? And imagine this kid, like, he knew if he deserted them, he's there's a possibility that he's going to die. Mm-hmm. But he was like, I don't care. I need to get out. Cause I, I wouldn't like when I was watching it, man, I was just like, yo, well, that's just imagine not seeing your family for 10 years. Jose. imagine, you know, you, you, you imagine not seeing your son. Imagine you, you, you don't see Jacob for 10 years. You don't see. I him. mean, so like, I mean, yeah, I mean, let's, I mean, let's, let's unpack it. Let's, let's I mean, we kind of start yeah. near the beginning. Right. So yes, he was abducted when he was about eight, spent 12 years in the military. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, when he defected, they went back to the village and they killed his father. Actually, yeah. they tortured they tortured his father before they, they killed him. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, where um, is he? Where is he? Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, that you know, think about that. Like, I guess like a you know, 18, 20 year old, whatever, around that mm-hmm. age when he when he uh, defected. And you know, you're you're already in a in a country where you don't understand any anything and you're just determined to make it, and you know. When you finally get in touch with your people, you find out that horrible thing that happens to your father. Like you said, you haven't seen your son. He was, who was like a newborn when he left, mm-hmm. right? Um, you know, you're, you're wondering about that. Your mom, your grandma, you're, you're just wondering how everybody's doing. All that's on your mind. You know, like that's, I mean, that can crush anybody. Yeah. You know? Well, actually, I mean, he had a he had a couple of kids uh, when he when he left. He said he was married with two kids mm-hmm. at that point when he when he was eighteen. And so, I mean, he had to make the decision to leave his family behind 
uh, to get out of that that situation that he was in. And fairness to your point of you know having an eight year old point a gun at you and think, hey, am, am I going to be the next one this kid kills? You know, it's it's imagine being six years old sitting in a in school just learning you know learning arithmetic, you know, addition and subtraction or whatever, mm-hmm. and then. You know, you think you're going home at the end of the day, but at the end of the day, you're a, you're a soldier. Yeah, you know, and, and it's how you killed this person, or you're going to be killed. Right. Yeah. yeah, he mentioned this several times that you know they would tell him, "Hey, you got to kill your friend," or you mm-hmm. know, or or, or you're going, or you're going. Not die. even that. They said some of the kids that they they would tell us to be quiet, and many of us cried. They disappeared. Like, 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 imagine like having, like, suppressing your emotion, right? Because the one thing you know. You know, men really don't do enough is cry. Crying is a release. You know, you're releasing stuff, right? And you feel better. Now imagine being telling an eight-year-old, suppress, suppress, mm-hmm. don't cry. I don't want to see no emotion from you. And you then your your brain and your body doesn't really know how to process emotion properly. You don't know how to process feelings because you're because you're being told to suppress a major emotion, crying, because if you cried, you get you, you disappear. So there's that part of you you don't fully develop a, like a healthy way of release and emotion through crying. And, you know, that, the more the mental health, the psychological effects of that, because it you're imbalanced, you know, you need to have balance and the kids couldn't have that. Yeah. And, and that was a big part of, you know, his, his story is, you know, he, he grew up, obviously mm-hmm. uh, he's, he's an adult, he's a professional fighter, but you know, he, didn't grow up the way most people do you know mm-hmm. he didn't have the chance to mature uh normally and you know they, they a lot of people said that he kind of you know he still acted like a teenager kind of and you know he was a little wild outside of the ring um you know not anything you know too bad but just you know acting like a a kid essentially because he mm-hmm. never he never had a childhood he didn't you know get to go through the 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 normal phases that people get to go through and you know it, it obviously it has an effect on him he didn't learn how to like you said process his emotions uh you know in a, in a healthy way and you can see in the documentary i mean he's talking about all this stuff that that happened to him yeah but he's always he's got a smile on his face he's always just he seems like he has a real you know he seems just happy in yeah. general right um i mean even there was a part where he was talking about how he enjoyed torturing people uh, when he was yeah. younger, but he was like, you know, but it's because I was young and, you know, I didn't, didn't really understand it until I got older, you know, and obviously now he, he, he regrets all that, but yeah. you can see that he's not really, you know, it, it, I, I don't want to say he's not processing or understanding it, but he's, he's kind of putting up at front right? yes. where, you know, you don't, he doesn't want to be upset and sad and, 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 you know, going through those emotions on camera during this documentary, a lot of times it seems like, and so he, you know, he's got a smile on his face and he's trying to keep things light and, and just, you know, be, be funny. And, 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 you know, and he's a, he's a very engaging person in the documentary, but yeah. it just, you know, it, there, there seems to be, at least to me, it seemed to be like a bit of a disconnect in the subject that he was talking about a lot throughout the, the film and the way he was acting you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So there was a part. Um, who was, it was that? It was that guy one of his trainers, Uncle Tom. Yeah, I mean, that was his manager. His yeah, manager. Manager, okay, trainer. Yeah. Cause, Cause I thought there's there's parts where he was training him, right? Mm-hmm. It looked like so. I I got a little confused there, but he wasn't actually in his corner. Yeah. Um. But yeah. But Uncle Tom. Uh. You know, kind of gave you a little insight. His name was actually Tom. He wasn't just calling him that. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um. Um. Real good guy. You know, from what, from what we can uh, see, but um, yeah, from, yeah, from the pieces I've gleaned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. But um, there was a part where um, I think yeah. it might have been before the Jermaine Taylor fight, and um, he was hanging out with some guys. Like he pulled up, and, and like they were they were smoking weed. He's oh, like, yo, yeah, let, yeah. yeah. He's like, yo, let me get some, right? And and Uncle Tom talked about it. It's like, hey, you know, you know, these are some of the things that we don't like that he does. You know, and I've I've talked to him about it before, um. And he said, he's like, you know, like he broke down and cried one day. He's like, listen, you don't understand. Like, this is what he, you know, I've been, I've been smoking since I was eight. Yeah. <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? He's mm-hmm. like, I've been, I've been smoking since, since I was eight. Like, this is what helps me cope. Yeah. Right. So, and, and, and when you look at from, from that aspect, it's like, yeah, you're going to leave him alone. Right. Like this man's been through some serious trauma that the, the, the average person hasn't been through. Mm-hmm. And that's how he copes. 
then that's how he copes. And, you know and what I'm still saying? going through it, right? Because he hadn't yes. seen, you know, while, during most of this documentary, he hadn't seen his family since yes. he was mm-hmm. abducted at, at six years old. Uh, a big part of it was him trying to get a, a pardon to go mm-hmm. back to Uganda because, again, you know, the penalty for desertion was was death. And, you know, so they wanted to make sure they got in touch with the Ugandan government because the, the leader of that rebel army that abducted him was, the president. Still, was still the president mm-hmm. at that point. Uh, and so they're trying to get a pardon and make sure that, you know, hey, man, if I come back, is that, is that going to be okay? You know, because his family is there. Uh, you know, obviously, he said he, he left his wife and, and two kids, so they were there. Uh, his grandmother, Grandma. you know, they wanted to go and see. And, you know, it, it, like I said, it, it's just a, you can see him kind of, there's points in the documentary, like when he's not talking and he doesn't, you know, not really uh, uh, focused on the camera, you can see him just kind of almost retreat into himself. He doesn't have the smile on his face. And you can see just the weight of, of everything that he's going through, just kind of sitting on him. And, yeah. and he's just thinking it, but you know, he's not, not verbalizing that to the camera or anything. Um, so it was, you know, at points it was really difficult to watch. And, you know, when he finally did get the, uh, the pardon, and was able to go back home, you know, even that was, was, was pretty, pretty heartbreaking. Cause yeah, he went to see the, the military and everything. And, you know, they told him, yeah, it's okay. You're here, blah, blah, blah. We, we forgive you and everything. And he went to, um, uh, just like, you know, uh, it was a, it was a village for displaced people, people who mm-hmm. had to, well, who had to leave their homes. Before you get, before you get to that part, I didn't want to cut your, your, your uh-huh. thought off, but I, I wanted to bring up when, he, when they go to meet the ambassador, Cause that part infuriated me, right? Oh like, yeah, where he was like, he was like, yeah. you know, you're young, we we'll make all the mistakes. Yeah, you apologize, I apologize, we all apologize. And he was like, they cut to him, and he's like, why the hell do I gotta apologize? Right? <laughs> they're just like, you know, they're like, yeah, you know, you, you ask mm-hmm. for forgiveness, and 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 you know, you know, we're gonna forgive you, people. You know, young young boys make mistakes, and he's mm-hmm. telling that story, you know, about, about the, the, the boy that to his father, like like. Yeah, like the boy that didn't listen to his father. I'm like, yo, you got some fucking nerve when you killed his father. Mm-hmm. You, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, like I mean, like that that whole thing got me. Got Which he, he blamed himself for. All right. Yeah. The, the documentary. Literally, he said, like, I, I got I my, killed I, my dad. I got my father killed. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, and listen, dude, the audacity of that ambassador, bro, straight up. Like I would, he said with a smile on his face, man. Yeah, he yeah. was smiling. Well, he, he said he was doing him a favor. He's like, you know, I'm your ambassador, man. I'm gonna take care of it. Yeah, 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 like, and they bro. even kind of suggested. I, I, I was, I was thinking that they, they weren't gonna let him go because they kept on bringing up the fight with Jermaine Taylor. They're like, just focus on the fight, you know, win the fight. Mm-hmm. That, 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 that'd be big. And if he for didn't us. win the fight, he wasn't that, gonna get it. That's why I was thinking. I was like, I oh thought. man, that's what I, I like, thought. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because and then like, alert, bro, like, he did not beat Jermaine Taylor. <laughs> oh, he did not beat Jermaine Taylor whatsoever. Um, yo, speaking of Jermaine Taylor, was he, was he, was he that famous? Was he, was he popular? He was, like, he was the man back then. That he was the first person to beat Bernard Hawkins. Yeah. What? Well, Damn. second. I'm sorry, second person because Roy Jones beat him early in his career. Okay. Um, but like, when, like but he, he became the executioner. Him. Yeah, yeah. When he became the executioner, he was the, like first person like to really knock him off. Oh damn! Yeah. Right, shout to you, Jermaine Taylor. Yeah, yeah. All yeah, I say is this man went Jermaine, off the rails for just, Jermaine after that. Yeah, but yeah. you know, because Jermaine Taylor couldn't talk shit in the press conference. That shit was whack. Yeah, right. bro. God damn. <laughs> yeah. oh. Oh, well, he was young. He was young then too. You know. Yeah. yeah. Go, 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 go. <laughs> Yo, go go like trash talking classes or something, bro. Like, what Jermaine, is this? Jermaine Taylor was a flash in the pan, man. Like, but he like he was hot for yeah. He was a man for a minute. And yeah. when I was looking at I was looking at Uma's uh um like like record, he fought Gennady Golovkin like yeah. like for for the vacant world title. And I was like, damn, dog. Yeah, he fought yeah. Golovkin. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yeah, but oh, well, he lost by TKO though. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. Of course, it's like, like most people did. Yeah, back in the day, so, <laughs> but G, two thousand eleven. That, that that made him the average fighter. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, it's cool. To, it's also what's weird is that they fought in Panama City in Roberto Duran Stadium. Mm-hmm. So I was like, oh wow, I can't believe Roberto Duran still has a stadium because, you know, apparently it wasn't he like a national pride. I was very confused on that other documentary I watched. Yeah, like, but I didn't yeah. want to cut you. But yeah, you, you're in the middle of a thought, but I, I wanted. To... Ferris always gets to bring it back to the Kings, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say the name. I know. I know. Yeah, I know. You know what? Know. You know what, Ferris? We're gonna we're gonna do that one next. Just kudos, kudos to you. We're gonna do that, <laughs> for, we're gonna do that for one next. yourself a little bit there. Uh, I think that yeah. was on AC Plus too, right? No, that's on, no, on Showtime. Okay, okay. Showtime Paramount Plus. 
Okay. Okay. <laughs> but right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, I was just saying. You know, when he went back and he was going to the, it was a village for displaced people who had to leave their leave their homes because of you know the war. Yeah, I love that. Scene. Yes. Well, the, I, you know, the the beginning of it was was really was really sad to me because he mm-hmm. he was there and you know all these people you know when he landed in uganda there was a, there was a whole bunch of people there waiting for him they were all celebrating mm-hmm. and cheering like he's a he's a hero in uganda grabbing uh, a belt yeah and when he when he got to that village and he's walking around and you can see that he just you know he kind of it would seem like he felt kind of uncomfortable because he didn't he didn't you know really remember the the language as well uh, you know, he's asking the, the guy that's with him how to say certain things. And, mm-hmm. you know, you can see that, you know, they took his childhood away from him. They took his home away from him. And, you know, he just kind of, you know, to me, he looked at that point like a guy who just didn't feel like he belonged anywhere. Now, you know, as as his trip went on, you know, he got he, seemed like he got more comfortable, you know, and he was seeing his family and everything. And and, and it was really nice to, to, to see that. But just early on, it, it seemed like, you know, he came back and he's like, what am I even coming back to? You know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cause, 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 um, yeah, he didn't go right to his village. Like they're going to yeah. stop at no. a couple places. Kind of like they kind of did a tour. Yeah. yeah. And then that one place one, you know, they put on a whole play for him reenacting mm-hmm. what happened, which that I, I, scene, bro, that was tough. That scene. So like, okay, that play scene and the scene where Brandon was talking about the, where the place where like he goes, he goes to this, like this, this room, this, this room, and just a bunch of dudes just standing around and basically kind of creates like a makeshift boxing club. Yes. Yeah. Boxing club. And like, you know, these, you know, these no proper boxing training. They didn't, they didn't, their stances were off. Their hands were too high. They looked awkward. And then they were like, and then there's one to where it's like, you know, mo- mo- most of everyone here, you know, they either, they drank, smoked or gambled, but now we all box. It creates a certain level of discipline within us. And it's kind of helped my life kind of change. Cause it, it taught me the right the right things to do, and I'm like, oh snap! And then it kind of gets it kind of like, and then it kind of gets like a little slow motion, and they kind of like do like the little he he does his boxing routine with them. I think that was a great touching moment where it's like, you know, because like one of the dudes is like, oh yeah, me and him got abducted together, you know, we we, yeah. we were together. Like I think it was, I yeah. So like there was one dude who said, oh yeah, I know him when we were like seven. Yeah. And then, and then the play scene, bro, where. But it basically it's basically teaching you history. Like, you know, we were talking about it earlier where like Germany has an entire park dedicated to the Holocaust, right? Dedicated to the Holocaust. Like, see, look what we did. This is what we this is what this country did to a, a certain group of pe- to people, you know, Jews, gypsies, handicapped. Um, mm-hmm. uh, this, this is what we did to people. And I don't want you to forget it, right? We you're not gonna forget it. You know, a country like Uganda can't build a park, right? You know. And also too, like there's some people in you that like, no, nah, we did the right thing, you know. So like, why should we remember? Like, why should we be reminded of an atrocity if we don't think it's an atrocity? Well, like right? the, the the country More. could, but yeah. the country doesn't want to. Yeah. Like they, exactly. they don't, you know, that that guy who did that was the president. He doesn't want president. you thinking about that. So it was those people, you know, preserving their 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 own history yeah. essentially, mm-hmm. right? Um, and yeah, that that was extremely sad as well, and and. You know, because the people who were in the play were all people who had been abducted or people who had survived the attack on that village, and they're dressing up as the soldiers who came in and killed their families. Yeah. And you know, it was you know even you know Kasim in the in the documentary that he couldn't he just couldn't watch it. He couldn't. Yeah, he, watch he it. left. He left. He's like, I couldn't do it. He like yeah. left. And then they they talked to the little girl about it. She was like, Oh yeah, my father was one of the ones they killed. And I was like, Like now she she's like she's like in full soldier regalia. You know, yeah. and like in in, in in you know, it's 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 oral history. You know, you, you tell mm-hmm. stories. You know, so you know you you're not. Some of these countries don't have notepads and computers and right. Let me type this. And it's like now, nah, how do we teach history through stories through you know music and reenactment music. and things like that? Yeah, yeah. exactly. And they traded they created a play to teach them of this is what happened here. Yep. This is what mm-hmm. happened here. You will remember it. And powerful, brutal, um, heartbreaking. But just tremendous way of telling history as as a history major myself. And and to your point about the 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 boxing club that they had mm-hmm. in the village, and you know them saying, hey, you know, it taught us a certain level of discipline and and helped to help us to improve in other areas of our lives. That's kind of what uh, Kasim used boxing for as well. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, obviously he, he he was able to defect because he was a, a talented boxer, uh, and and he used his boxing career to 
you know, build himself up, obviously make mm-hmm. money for his family. You know, and he says that you know multiple times in the documentary that all the work that he's he's doing, you know, and 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 all the fights that he takes and all the money he makes that's for his his kids, you know, and that's something that kind of comes through uh, when you look at his career, his career arc, uh, because early on, you know, leading up to the Jermaine Taylor fight, because that's where that was the fight that the the documentary kind of focused on more than the others, yeah. uh, was him kind of preparing for that fight. Because it was a, it was a big deal. It was for the middleweight championship and all that. Um, he was twenty five two one and one at the time of the Jermaine Taylor fight. He had 25 wins, two losses, one draw, one no contest. Uh, and one of the better prospects in the world, right? He was one of the, the hottest boxers in, mm-hmm. in the game at that point. Uh, he lost the Jermaine Taylor fight. And since then is four and 15. Yeah. Um, he has not and, won since 2016. Yeah. And, you know, he, and, you know, he mentioned he's fought, he's fought some notable people since then. He fought triple G, uh, Vanis Martirosian, uh, Gabriel Rosado, Cornelius Bundridge. Uh, but it seems like you know, it wasn't hey, I want to be a great fighter, it's I have to be great at this to get my family out of the situation that that, that we're currently mm-hmm. in. And once he did that, once he accomplished that, you know, it, it, I, I read some articles because I mean, he didn't really obviously didn't touch on it in the documentary because this was just at the time of the, of the Taylor fight. Mm-hmm. But it seems like, you know, after that, he kind of lost the, the the will to sure. to be be a boxer. Right? And he was kind of, you know, just, you know, partying, not training as hard and everything, which is, is you know, again, a completely understandable. That wasn't your your goal, like not right. to be a great fighter and, and have this legacy and all this. You know, you're doing box. You're boxing for a very specific reason, and you accomplish that reason. You know, it's not, not yet. Now your source, off. your yeah. source of your fire is gone because you've, like, like I, I, it's like it's like the you know like like the like the Maravich project, right? The documentary, like you know he his main thing was to make sure his dad loved him, so he was amazing. He was like, fo- fo- my dad loves football. I'm gonna be the best quarterback ever. And then in that documentary, when they say that my dad. He's like the Maravich dad. He says, I love you. And Todd's like, thank God. All hell, just all hell, he just went downhill. Todd just went downhill because his source of being great was the love of his father. He finally got it. Now he doesn't need to be great. You know what I mean? Right. He Like same thing with uh, with Kasim Uma. He He's like, I need to be great. I need to be, because I need to reconnect and to connect my family. I need to like put it together. Mm-hmm. Family's now connected. He has no source. Let's find something else, but he never did. Yeah, yeah, uh, I think, I think there's problems right. up there. No, I'm not his goal. Oh, okay. I'm a bad. I'm not. I'm not blaming the guy. You know, he accomplished his goal. Yeah, but if you like, it got to the point where it's like, nah, I'm just boxing out for money. I don't, I don't really care about the belts. Really, just give me some cash. Well, and yeah, whatever. Yeah, I That's mean, fine. from 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 a boxing fan point of view, right? Mm-hmm. It looks like it looks like the story doesn't end well because, like, yeah, his his career. Goes mm-hmm. downhill after that, but he got his life back. back you know, yeah. pieces. You know, a big pieces of his life back, and um, he could. You know, he started to heal. You can see it at the at the end of the documentary. He got to go back to Uganda. He got you know got to to the village you know, where he grew up. He got to see his grandmother. They never thought he would see again. You know, mm-hmm. even mm-hmm. earlier on in the documentary, he brought his other son that was that was over there uh, yeah. to to U.S. Brought his mom over. So mm-hmm. yeah, so yeah, that passion for fighting isn't there but fighting wasn't really his passion his passion was his family so it it's a very happy ending right mm-hmm. it's a very happy ending um you know and i think he still fights now just you know more for, so for you know to get a paycheck and make sure his family's taken care of but you know people's goals aren't the same not, not everybody yeah not everybody dreams of being a a a, a champion you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. um some people they're literally just fighting for their livelihood you know Mm-hmm. Um, and this is one of those uh, stories, which is very interesting because, you know, you, you get to see, you know, uh, these backgrounds from where these people come from. A lot of times, you know, ESPN or some of these, you know, these, these uh, networks, they always want to tell you the same story. Oh, yeah, I grew up in a tough neighborhood. This is and that. And the only thing that's going to um, get me through is boxing. And I hate I hate that narrative for, for black athletes in general for mm-hmm. any sport. I hate that. Narrative that's why because- I always found Bud's story so unique. It was like, nah, my mama made me box. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. and you're like, wait, what? He's like, yeah, she she's the reason I'm boxing. 
she like told everybody if anyone can kick my ass in the neighborhood she'll give them ten dollars like that's different that's yeah different. It's, not, yeah it's not like oh yeah my daddy left me a five but i found uh, yeah. salvation in boxing i found my mentor um giovanni rubisi uh it's always an italian junior. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like it's the marvin Hagler story it's the marvin Hagler story you know, um, I had to, I had to buy, like, no, it's, well, come on, like, come on, it's Marvin Hagler, it's everyone's, it's just, it's just repurposing Wait, you, Marvin yeah, Hagler's like, story, you know, like, you know, like, um, like my, my, I was, I was, I was the oldest of eight, Yeah, uh, I found salvation in boxing, um, yeah, my, my trainers I, became my bro, fathers, I, I hate and it, you're bro. like, okay, and, and, all right, like, not, that's not why Errol Spence is a little different, Errol Spence, he, he seems like he was, he seems like he was well off growing up. Yeah, I think like he wasn't, yeah. he's from he DeSoto, like Texas, right? Yeah, so, nice, like, yeah, so, nice, nice so I'm like, I'm like, good. A high flown black man. Thank yeah. God. Like, not to, you know? not to, not to discredit any of those stories that happened, right? No, yeah, no, uh, no, yeah, no, but, no, discrediting, but, but like, but, but the way that they're, these networks they're deal with trauma, they, they hoist it up, right? Yeah. yeah. And it, 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 it happens with NFL players. Yeah. But that's, that's my point. It, it, it drives yeah. a narrative that, you know, like, that's how, you know, that's where, all these athletes coming that's what it takes to make it and and you know you're you know that's the only way out uh out of those neighborhoods um in this country which is bs right mm -hmm. like that's not their only hope for for success is through sports right I, that's why yeah. i hate that narrative but yeah, in this also music. and music as well yeah but yeah. but but in this scenario like this hey, is man, something you know football or rap yeah but, no, but don't, it, don't try to be a doctor don't try to be fireman or you know don't no don't do that yeah anything yeah anything you know but but in, in Kasim's situation you know coming from a different country that's war stricken that's actually that that's very dire you know um and no option. what he did was out of desperation mm -hmm. okay. desperation like i mean like the like the trainers like his, his trainers you know the, at the gym he was, he was going to they joked mm -hmm. about it. he said yo he just walked in and he didn't speak any English. He was just repeating whatever we said. Yeah. Right. <laughs> he, he said, he's, like, he's, like, whatever, he's like, whatever, whatever they said to me, I'll just repeat it back to him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's, they they, okay, well, that's how you learn okay. a language. You just, yeah, they said yeah. something. I, I just say it back to him. He didn't know what they were saying. And they, they're like, yo, we didn't even know he was homeless, but he was just coming here first thing in the morning. And he, he wouldn't leave until we closed. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, and then wherever he went, he went and then came back the next day. Like, mm -hmm. that's crazy. Yeah. You know, you know like, like, how did that, he pay his boxing, his boxing gym dues? This is crazy. I, I those, those, listen, those are the type of. I mean, I've, I've been in a bunch of gyms like that before. Like those are the type of gyms. They ain't gonna charge you if you're gonna put in the work. If you show okay, cool. up and, and, and you and you're willing to show, like not not every mm -hmm. boxing gym is like, hey, you gotta pay this and that. Like you go in there, and you're willing to put in the work, and they see something in you, they'll, you know, like, All right. oh, they'll be like, forget the deuce, we're gonna make some money. Yeah, yeah. You know? or, or or even if they don't see like the, the even if you don't have the necessarily have potential, but it's one of those things. Don't waste my time. Right. Yeah. If you're in there, and you're serious about boxing. There are some places that they, they, they ain't in it for the money. Like they have a gym, you know, you want, you know, they want to teach people to box. If you're willing to learn it and, and not waste the time, they're, they're mm -hmm. going to let you, they're going to let you train. Especially like, younger people. A lot of uh, trainers like are. Like Five are Gym ran by Tony Duke Evans. Evans. <laughs> and, but yeah, they're, they're interested in, in you know, helping, to helping Burton. younger, younger, younger people find a, a path, you know. Like you said, that's not. Hey, uh, I'm gonna be a rapper or sell drugs or whatever, you know. And and you know, just getting kids out of the street, getting them into a a a, mm -hmm. the, a, a straighter, uh, straighter salvation. Path. And and like you mentioned before, giving them that discipline and that work mm -hmm. ethic and, and things like that. Uh, Kasim, they, they said when he when he showed up in the U.S., uh, you know, he, he asked somebody at the airport, like you know, if there was a or or he he met somebody and they they mentioned that there were uh, he mentioned he was a fighter and they told him, oh well. Uh, you know, Joe Frazier has a boxing gym and uh, Sugar Ray, you know, in Philadelphia and Sugar Ray has one in Maryland. And so they said he bought a bike. He, 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 he landed in, I think it was DC. He bought a bike. He just started biking towards one of the gyms. Like he yeah. was just gonna, he was gonna go. And they said the police stopped him and was like, yo, you can't bike to, to Philadelphia. Right? <laughs> and so, so he, he turned, turned around. Hey, and he wait, gotta, how is that? that? That shouldn't be illegal. It's not, it's not, they didn't arrest him. They were just telling oh. him, like, because he didn't know how far it was. I yeah, mean, like, no, no, Philly's pretty far, big dog. Okay, I thought it was like, that's not, not, not going to get it. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I thought they were like, no, you're you're going to jail for biking to oh, Philadelphia. No, 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 no. Like, I mean, because, <laughs> you know, but any, black dude's, he black dude's been arrested for, for much less. <laughs> yeah. 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 He, he went back yeah. and he, he got a job at a, like, at a pizza place, just kind of delivering uh, like flyers or whatever. And they said mm -hmm. every time he, he wouldn't like 
just leave him in, in, in the mailbox or in the door or whatever. He would hand deliver him to somebody who lived there. And because every person he delivered went to, he was asked, Hey, is there a boxing gym around here? You know, and, and somebody eventually told him about the, the gym in Arlington. Uh, the Alexander Box Club, yeah. And and that's where that's where he started training. Mm-hmm. Um the, and that kind of brings me to my best point. Like it, you know, the Kasim Uma's story is incredible. It's a it's an amazing story. Um as a documentary, though, I thought that, that it kind of left something to be desired. They, they didn't go deep enough into his story for me. Because uh-huh. uh, like that, that well, I just mentioned about him, you know, working at the pizza place and, and that's how he found the gym. They didn't say that in the documentary. You know, I just re- I read that in an article about him. Yeah. Um, I don't think that they went far enough into what was going on in Uganda when he was when he was young and when he was abducted. Uh-huh. They didn't really say anything about that. And, and part of the reason is because you know, it was really just led by Kasim. He was narrating the entire thing. It wasn't, you know, the, the, the filmmaker Keith Davidson wasn't, uh, you know, he wasn't interviewing him or anything like that. He was, you know, Kasim was just telling his story. And obviously there's parts of the story that he's not going to want to focus on. Uh-huh. Sure. Uh, but that's that's your job as the as the filmmaker to fill in the, those blanks. Or, I mean, even in some cases to push him to, to talk about some of those, those other things that he doesn't really want to dwell on. Uh, yeah. that's kind of the, the point of, of, of making the film is to, is to get that story out there and dive deep into that story. So I, I don't think he did a great job of that. Um, uh, I would still recommend watching it for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think, I, I think, think because, uh, one of the biggest purposes of the doc was, you know, him, him at Congress and him talking to, trying to get a part and trying to talk to you. I think they probably did talk. I, I don't know. Okay. I'm not going to say they probably did, but I think probably they left it out because they didn't want, you know, the Ugandan government to be like, why are you talking about this? You know what I mean? Why are you, why are you, why are you, why are you, why are you putting this on tape? Maybe, but you know, but, but, but I, no, no, I I see your, I see your point. I I see your point, but um, there's still, I mean, even if you want to focus on from his time when he got here to, you know, um, that I agree get, with. Get, get into pro boxing. That I agree and, with. There, there's I, a lot to be desired on that one. Yeah, I didn't know and, about the pizza thing. That, that's actually a great story. Yeah, but 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 you know, I think one thing that was, that stood out to me when I was watching it was that uh, no real narration going on, right? When, yeah. and, when, and when you know, it, mm-hmm. it's just you're just letting you're just kind of just following Kasim around, but like mm-hmm. you know, the average person doesn't know who Kasim is, right? And he's just you know, you you just walk around with him and letting him talk you could do that with more popular uh athletes right mm-hmm. if if, it's, if if you're walking if, if lebron james is walking around we don't need you to narrate for lebron james we know who he is you don't know who kasim is and some narration to the story would have would have helped a whole lot and kind of just let him talk kind of just like let him talk just like yeah. talk but, but you know kasim is an incredibly engaging person in the documentary you know mm-hmm. he's very charismatic and like you if you just interviewed him you know, that would have led to a, a much more fleshed out story and, and you get to know Kasim much better, you know, as, as, as he is now as, or was at the, at the time that they were, they were filming it, but they, yeah, like you said, they just kind of, you know, followed him around with the camera and just mm-hmm. let him talk about whatever he wanted to talk about. Yeah. Um, and like I said, I, I would still recommend watching it for sure. It's an incredible story um, and, and everything mm-hmm. that he, that he went through and overcame, but I thought just as a, as a film, they could have done, they could have done more and could have done better. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Definitely, um, they definitely left some crumbs on there that could have they could have kept going. Yeah, you know, they could have they could have interviewed people like, like interviewed like they could have interviewed like Uncle Tom more. You know, mm-hmm. it was like you know Uncle Tom could have like he, he was revealing good tidbits like like the smoking story was a good tidbit. Like what what else does Uncle Tom know? Yeah. But they really didn't talk about. Well, and, and yeah, and the, and the thing too, they're gonna lie. They're gonna yeah. lie. They're gonna lie. So you need someone to counterbalance that, you know? No one's going to tell their full truth because some people don't want... They don't want people to know about certain things. You know what I mean? Like, that's what makes biopics about people who are still alive not very good because they're going to have some say of, like, hey, that didn't happen. Stop doing that. That's what makes Rocket Man so good because Elton John was like, tell everything. Tell everything. People were like, yo, Elton John did that? That's crazy. You know, unlike Bohemian Rhapsody where, like, like, whatever. Yeah, but you know, to your point, like uh, with with Uncle Tom, like he, you know, they they had the story about him uh, about Kasim smoking weed, you know, before before the mm-hmm. fight, 
close mm-hmm. to the fight and how that kind of took away from his training. Uh, but you know, they, they also talked about him kind of partying with friends, you know, having a lot of people, people around. The, yeah. Tw- like why is there 25 people in your room? Right. Like, in Vegas, bro. And, and that was really the only, uh, you know, uh, glimpse into his training that you, you saw. So mm-hmm. it kind of sends out the impression that, Oh, this guy was, he's not serious. He's right. not serious about boxing. He doesn't work hard. But no, I mean, he had to have worked hard to get to 25 to one and one to begin with, right? Mm-hmm. You know, he, he got to the top, he got to the pinnacle of, of boxing there, um, you know, because that Jermaine Taylor fight was a huge fight. Yeah. It, it mm-hmm. was. And and so I thought that, you know, like I said, it, it just kind of left that that little impression that I don't really think was true and that you could have you could have balanced that out with more talk about him and his career early on. And the work that he put in early on to build that career to begin with, mm-hmm. uh, but it really just, you know, they they left they let a lot of things just kind of go by the wayside when they just kind of let Kasim uh, really lead the documentary himself. It mm-hmm. seemed like, yeah, because look, his his record. I'm pulling I'm pulling it up right now as, as we talk. Right, it's his like his 29, record twenty nine eighteen and one twenty nine eighteen and one. Let me tell you something. That's a like like in terms in terms of just like like being a competitor at a high level, it's not a good record. But just in general, you have a winning record, right? If I told you, yeah, I boxed professionally and I finished my career 29, 18, you know, one on one, that's a that's a damn good career. You beat up 29 yeah. men. That, and, and I held and I held a, a junior uh middleweight belt, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. Um, that's a very accomplished career. And only four men knocked me out. So right. So fourteen other men couldn't couldn't. Stop and I fought him. some of the best in the world. Yeah, yeah the Gluten Jermaine Taylor couldn't knock him out. Yeah. Right, right. Um. So I mean, like in in terms of that, that's I mean, yeah. And like we said, talk about the early part of his mm-hmm. career where he was hot. But I I think this just goes to show you how hard it is to put together a documentary, right? Like mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> it is. It's just it's not easy. And even when you have a good story there, man, like. It's just not easy to put everything together, especially if it's a one-off, right? Like, mm-hmm. You know, it's not a series, or you know, you, you're cutting it for for time because I think it, it was only it wasn't even that long. It was like an hour, hour, hour and a half, and a half or so. Yeah. But you know, and I think part of it too is also it's when you decide to make a documentary, yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Because I think for this one, they they decided when he, you know, you had the Jermaine Taylor fight coming up, and you know, he's obviously in the process of trying to get back to Uganda. And they said, "Hey, man, this is this is a great story. We should tell this mm-hmm. story." Uh, versus, we're going to follow Kasim from the beginning of his career. Like they weren't doing that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, so they, they kind of they kind of moment. interrupted his his tree. You good? You good? You good there? I'm sorry. I apologize. They kind of interrupted <laughs> his Jermaine. They kind of interrupted his training for Jermaine Taylor, and so yeah. like they're kind of like I think they were kind of just like being like, let's not like impose ourselves upon a man who's about to have the biggest fight of his career. So they kind of just like were laid back to it and they well, kind of like interviewed yeah. him when. And, and I had... think too, that kind of tells you his mindset about his career mm-hmm. at that point, right? Because that's the biggest fight of his career, but he's got the, the, a documentary. the fight with, well, not even so the documentary, but the fight with trying to get back to Uganda going on. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. as well like that was i mean obviously more important to him than the jermaine taylor fight mm-hmm. and, yeah. and that comes through in the in the documentary as well uh i think at that point he had said you know what man i've i've accomplished what i needed to accomplish in boxing sure and i need to go home i need to get my family and make sure that everything's okay and and you know like I said, that, that's completely understandable and you know, but that just comes through when, when you're doing that at the same time as the, the you're getting ready for the biggest fight of your career yeah, you know, yeah. it's just that mm-hmm. that was on kind of the back burner. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, I, I think we pretty much wrapped uh, everything up in the documentary. Uh, very, very um, interesting. Well worth your time, right? It wasn't the best documentary in the world, but well worth the watch, especially mm-hmm. if you're a boxing fan and yeah. you want to get a different perspective on like where some of these you know people come from, some of these, some of these boxers come from. Uh, very, very compelling story. Uh, heartbreaking, but. You know, like I said, it's it's uh it's it's heartwarming at the end too when, when you can see him start to put his family back together, you know, because you know, situations like that, man, like most of the time that family's gone, right? Mm-hmm. Like you, <laughs> most of the time, like you don't get to see that family again. That's that's a wrap, you know. Um, 
but he was able to reconnect with his mom who's who's living with him in the United States. His son that was over there, he had another son over here over here in the United mm-hmm. States. Uh to see the two of them. Um uh, I, I like that part too. Like it's like they instantly bonded as soon yeah. as they met, you know. Mm-hmm. Um so that that was really good to see. Um and then, you know, have you know, having to go back to Uganda and and getting to see his grandmother cuz you know, I I, I didn't think that was going to happen, you know. Um, and then, you think you know, he the, bought her the new teeth? Well, um, I hope so. You know, maybe hope we should so. follow up. You know, he's trying <laughs> to follow up. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, like just just seeing seeing all that, man, and then and the to see him get emotional at the end, where you didn't see him get emotional throughout the whole thing. Like he kind of tried yeah. try to laugh it off, and like all the emotion came out. All the emo, yeah. like the I like the grave the sorrow site. and everything. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. With his with his father. So like, yeah, he looked yeah. like a man who cried but didn't want to cry so yeah. he kind of had like that weird face where it's like don't cry don't cry but mm-hmm. tears are being shoved out of your face and you kind of like this like weird look of like him not knowing how to process what the hell that is happening because it's like and, it was and, it was it was wild yeah and and like and like he you know he's literally having a breakdown and the vi- village is literally holding him up right like the people in the village are holding him mm-hmm. up like yeah you know pick yourself up man you know what I'm saying like we love you like that was mm-hmm. that was great to see you know what I'm saying? Like, like they, they, you know, they, they, they had his back. You know, um, except that one dude who like took a picture of him when he was like crying, crying the wall, like, bro, really? Back up, <laughs> back up. Yeah, but yeah, like I said, uh, very, very good uh, 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 parts to this. You know, uh, check it out if you get a chance on AMC Plus. You know, uh, or other sources uh, you can find it. Okay. <laughs> um, all right, Ferris, you are guest, man. Uh, fi- final thoughts. Um, good doc. It was good, not great. It was good. You right. There's a lot of stuff that could have been touched upon. Um, but you know, it's just another sense of knowledge that I liked. I didn't know nothing about the guy, and honestly, man, it just showed you that sometimes you know, a certain fight is bigger than another fight, right? You know, Jermaine Taylor. Yeah, it's a big fight and all. That's good, but you know, you can't really be whole unless you have a place you call home, a part of you. And for 10 years, his his heart was like, f- had a hole in it. Cause like, there's some people like, if like there's some people who like leave like p- places like Uganda, they're like, ah, that's no longer my home. I'm done. You know, I'm, I'm over. But he was like, it's been, I, I like love, it's been my, it's been my heart forever. I want to be, I want to, I want to have it. I want to be able to like go back, you know, and, you know, he fought for that. And he showed you that, like, yeah, you know, not, when the Jermaine Taylor fight was probably important to him, but sometimes there's a there's a bigger fight going on than than the one in the ring. Yeah, it? yeah. Well said, well said. Uh, anything else, B, uh, before we get up out of here? Um, you know, like, like I said, first off, definitely check out the the, the doc, Kasim the Dream. Um, and, you know, I think this is, kind of emblematic of, of boxing as a sport where, you know, there's so many fighters all over the world at, at different levels and everything. And you're not, you, there's no chance that you can know who all of them are. Right. right? And, uh-huh. and, you know, getting to see fighter stories, you know, in, in documentaries, you know, through articles, things like that, you know, you get to know the, the fighters themselves a little bit and, and, you know, you, you'll hear some great stories and you'll, you'll also, even if it's not, you know, a Kasim Uma type story, because not many people have that kind of story. You get to know the fighters, and 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 you know, you get to to kind of increase the the your investment in, in a lot of these fights, where otherwise you're just kind of oh, whatever, you know. Because I remember it was the same thing with a Canelo fight uh, not too long ago. I cannot remember the guy's name is Ildrum, Ildrum, I believe. Yeah, yeah. Um, Yildrum. Yildrum. The yeah. Turkey and, dude. The Turkey yes, dude. Yes. Yeah. And I'd never heard of him. But I started, you know, because the fight was coming up and we were going to, you know, we were going to talk about it. I looked into, you know, his fight a little bit or, or that fighter a little bit and, and, you know, watched some videos on him, read a couple of articles. And like he was just a, a a hero in Turkey. You know, he's like the greatest fighter that they had ever produced. And, you know, the the, the just to see the, the, the love and support of all the people over there for this guy who, you know, all of us, we look at him like, oh, we don't, you know. This guy has no shot in this fight, right? And you just kind of dismiss it. But you know, you, you get to see the other side and how important and impactful these fights are. Even if the even if the guy loses, you know, mm-hmm. uh, it, it still means so much to to 
you know, people at, in, in his home that, that they're able to even get to that level. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's always, you know, it, it, it makes things, you know, it kind of grounds things for you, you know, and, and, and remind it's always good to remind yourself that all the people that you're watching, all these sports are, are humans. You know, they're not just there, they're not just there for your entertainment. You know, there are real people with real stories, real families, you know, and, and real things going on outside of, uh, of whatever sporting event they're, they're taking part in. Yeah. As well as the world's pretty damn big. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty big. Right. You know, like, cause like we, we're a lot of, a lot of boxing fans that we know there's an American centric view of it. Like, where's the American? Where is he? Cause like for years, Americans ran the game, right? It was like, like there was like, there was like four, like. But well, back then it was only like eight weight classes. Now it's like yeah. 75, 100,000 million junior, <laughs> double weight, junior, 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 senior, middleweight champion. You're like, okay, whatever. Uh, but back then it was only like eight and mm -hmm. like six of them were Americans. Right. You know, so like Americans. And it's only six because we don't make them that small over here. Exactly. <laughs> um, we ain't got no straw weights. Yeah. yeah, pretty much. So like, yeah, so like, like at one moment, our middleweight champion was American, our welterweight champion was American, our heavyweight champion was American, our you know our light heavyweight, like they're all Americans, right? But then you started realizing like boxing is a global. Like Jose, when, when Jose told me in New Zealand, there's literally a, you. I think you and Jose told me there's literally a day in New Zealand where it's just boxing. All day, yeah, yeah. Every like an like, and you're like, but well, what? Like, how many New Zealanders box? And you're like, a lot, all of a them. lot, all, all of them, them. Every, everybody. Like, like, like there was, every, every. Like, <laughs> like, like, you know, like Joseph Parker had a world yes. heavyweight championship belt. You know, you you, you, probably, you you know how famous that man probably was in New Zealand. Yeah, that man was probably popping. Like, yo, that's Joseph Parker right here, dog. You know what I mean? And like, there's also like this other New Zealand boxer that if he didn't box in a certain era. He would have like won a belt. It was like I think it was like during Lennox Lewis. I don't know what his name is, but I remember y'all 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 told me him, and I'm like, oh damn, David Tua, David, David Tua, Tua. Yeah. yeah, him. So like there was him, like like boxing is worldwide. The Philippines, yeah. yeah, yeah, you know, like like they 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 like them and the Japanese run the lightweight divisions. Um, literally, Monster anyway. He had multiple boxing cards in japan and you're like how many people are gonna how many boxes it was like it was like 12 japanese boxers actually 15 because in in one fight it was two japanese people fighting each other it's like 15 japanese dudes on one card and you're like whoa that's a lot it's like yeah dude it's worldwide yeah. it's worldwide yo you mentioned uh joseph parker that was <laughs> we, that, that, that's the event that we were talking about he was fighting junior fa who's another mm -hmm. uh new zealander and that was it was about like seven or eight hours straight of the just boxing. boxing. And yeah. it wasn't even in an arena. I mean, it was in an arena, but like it, it, when they showed the crowd, like they weren't in stadium seats. Like it was like a, a, a dinner. Like they were all at dinner tables. Like it was a restaurant. Like yeah. it was a, it was a big classy event. Yeah. And they just had you know in the middle of it a bunch of people beating their brains out. They, they brains showed out. it. On, we watched it on the zone. Like it was yeah. like it, we, we watched as much as we could. It was on for hours. It was like a yeah. boxing festival. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, so but like, yeah, yeah. No, boxing worldwide. Boxing worldwide. And Absolutely. I think Africa, honestly, I think Africa is, un, is untapped potential. Mm -hmm. I think it's untapped sure. potential in Africa. You need to go to Africa, find some good fighters. You know, Richard Comey is one of them I know. Um, that's the only really one I actually know. Not I mean, anymore. Now you know Kasim Uma. No, I do know because yeah. <laughs> as well as I, I as well as Isaac Dogbe. Yeah. So I yeah. guess everyone who fights are top rank, I guess. <laughs> but you know, that, that it's like that that saying, it's uh you know, talent is evenly distributed, opportunity is not. Exactly. You know, there, there there's there's great athletes all over the world, but you know, in some places you just don't get the opportunity to show it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, exactly. And that's not just athletics, that's in that's in everything. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, we'll wrap this up. Uh, we hope you enjoyed this. Uh, we uh, this is a, a, a great um, this is a, a great documentary to cover. Uh, lot lots of different aspects to break down in this. So um, yeah, once again, make sure you guys check that out. Uh, Cassine the Dream available on AMC Plus. Um, but yeah, uh, make sure you're following us on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at Ring Kings Pod. And uh, if you're listening to this uh, through audio, make sure you drop a five-star review for us. 
that helps that helps us and also on youtube if you watch us on youtube hit that like button and if you're new here go ahead and hit that subscribe button um any any last last plugs or anything before we get out of here well ferris, well, ferris tell, tell, know, yeah where, where everybody can find you yeah. uh, y'all can find me at f ferris malone on twitter as well as on the let's get ready network channel um where uh you know where we our channel one of our channel we I have two channels one of our channels is a, a pretty media based you know every tuesday we have our entertainment news break as well as we're, we're reviewing movies and tv shows i'm um, actually you know boxing related um we've started this um retro review series of rocky um nice. we had yeah we have just released rocky 1 already so make sure i can subscribe to that video we're we're at 100 we're at 785 subscribers right now so we're 15 away from 800 so you know share it you know pass along to your your mother your grandmother your brother your sister your father um pass it along um and we're just kind of like you know leading up to Creed 3 every week we're releasing a rocky movie uh next week coming up is rocky 2 we're going to do it in chronological order so mm. it's going to be cool too because um i i remember watching rocky 2 but i don't remember rocky 2 right. and i started in the in the in the, i'll give you a sneak peek of the, the episode i start i thought a piece of rocky 2 was in actually Rocky One, but then I saw it in Rocky Two because those movies kind of sh- were shoved, kind of like melded together in my brain. Yeah. So I'm like, oh snap! It was like kind of like threw me off. Um, and then you know we were so like we're gonna we're gonna do Rocky Three, Four, Five, Six. I have never seen Rocky Balboa the movie ever. Yeah, that's number good. six. I've never seen it, so that's gonna be um, it's gonna be a good experience. I've also me and Dagan are gonna argue over Rocky Five, and you know. People, people, I think it gets too much hate personally. People be like, well, how did he? G-? Yeah. Was that the one with Tommy Morris? Or was that the yep. one where he? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Tommy Machine Gun. Yeah. <laughs> and then, you know, in fake Don King, um, yeah, yeah. touch me and I'll sue. Yeah. That's, uh, <laughs> that's a great line. Uh, and then we know, uh, uh, yo, man, I love Creed. I love Creed. Creed one and two. Yo, Creed two and Creed, oh my God, bro. Yeah. Ryan Coogler don't miss. All right. He don't miss. I know he didn't direct two, but he picked the guy to direct it. So he picked the dude to replace him. So like the man picked his replacement and his replacement gave me a great film. I'm like, bro, you do not miss, bro. You don't freaking miss. We don't miss from the Bay, baby. Bay Area people don't miss. We got Zendaya. We got her. We got Kehlani. We got Ryan Coogler. We got... Oh, what's that? Got E40. E40. <laughs> sure. We don't miss, bro. <laughs> Oh, sorry, All right, tell them about your other channel, Ferris. <laughs> other channel is the Let's Get Ready Networks. The highlights is our entire <laughs> encompassing sports channel. We um every every Monday, three o'clock, good friends, better rivals, me and my homie Caleb. We break down the C- Cowboys Giants of the NFL and the NFC East. Well, it was probably just Giants Cowboys. Um coming up, we um are the Giants it's three play- Pacific time, correct? Three Pacific time, three Pacific time, six Eastern, five Central. Shout out to my central folks. Um so like, there's that. Um, me and Adelia are starting up our tennis podcast, The Rally. We had just recorded an episode. It's our Australian preview. It's out. Um, as of as of recording, it's out right now. Uh, and I got I'm not gonna lie to you. I got I got so excited. I forgot to introduce myself on that on the episode. Um, because you know I don't know why, man. Talking tennis with Adelia is extremely fun. I, I love talking. Like I don't know why. And it's the show got rehauled on like it's on graphics on intro. You know, we we kind of like gave it its own identity now. You know, it's groove. It's kind of the music is kind of groovy. I like it. You know, um, (laughs) and as well as we're also reviewing Breakpoint, which is the tennis documentary series about last season, and it's we kind of incorporated the reviews of that into that show. So as well, um, as well as um, uh, we just had our last episode of our fantasy football roundup with our champion Greg, uh, who won the very inaugural first. LGR Fantasy Football Roundup League. I'm sorry, Bradney, please. Well, whatever. All right, sorry. All right. Uh, so, yeah, I have that as well. So, yeah. All right. There yeah. you go. That's all, all the shows on the sports on the sports channel release at 3 o'clock Pacific, 6 o'clock Eastern, starting 11, rally, um, good friends, better rivals, all 3 o'clock, all 3 o'clock Eastern. Uh, 3 go. o'clock Pacific, 6 o'clock Eastern. Yes. Yeah. So, there you go. Let's get ready to network and let's get ready to network highlights channel make sure you subscribe to both of them and they're also available wherever you listen to audio podcast wherever. so make spotify sure you drop google a, yep um, drop a five-star review on, yeah. on on their stuff as well Apple podcast radio republic the brazilian podcasting network there you go all that yeah. stuff that, so. that, that one's not real 
<laughs> all right. It, it might be. Somebody might have one. <laughs> all right. Ferris, I appreciate you, brother, man. Thank you As guys for always, having me man. This is a lot of fun. B, are you ready? I'm ready. All right. Mikey didn't join us for this one, but he will be back for the next one, which will be dropping shortly. So y'all take it easy. Enjoy the rest of your week. We'll see you next time. Peace. Peace. Things like you have.